And then the last one we got here is the distilleries. Imagine if they were making hand sanitizer and it's still, you know, like you have different fragrances on it. Yes. Like the IPA. <laughs> you know, the, you the, the bar the fly gym. flavor. You know, so you can put it on. <laughs> Where were you? You back at the bar again? No, no, it's just a sanitizer. <laughs> so I feel like I'm around a bunch of people yes. that are talking about nothing. Uh, mm, oh, Norm's yeah. down the corner. Yeah. <laughs> And welcome to episode 34, Fusion and Innovation. So there's going to be a few interesting things that we're going to talk about today. Um, But I want to welcome Phil and I want to ask you, have you ever tried a plant-based magnum? No. No. And why should I? (laughs) (laughs) Well. Isn't it like artificial? No. Well, if 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 it was a real magnum, it'd have cow's milk in it. Well, but this is, yes, it would, but this is a vegan version. So maybe it has coconut or Mm. something else. So it's real. This is like the the bourbon thing. (laughs) That's right. Which one is rock gut and which one is aged? So why don't you just tell me which one is? No. No. I don't want both of them. No, you're going to have a bottle of each. Well, get in. You you got to skeeve me. Did you say that word in California? No. Do you skeeve somebody? No. That's like a big thing in the in the East Coast. Anyway, well, good, let's York. talk about this while we're talking about our cultural differences. Yeah. Well, scheming means like, ugh. Yeah, gross. Oh, yeah. yeah. And for someone that was complaining about eating both of them, he took the whole bite. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I'm going to get a brain freeze, though. So. Okay, just one bite, and then we'll pop them in the freezer. Okay. Second bite went in. So now I got to um, yeah. tell you which one was Which one do you think? I mean, very close. Yeah, see, Almost that's the point. Almost how close I can't tell. Very important. Hmm. So but I would say the um, this one is the real one. So the, yes, and, and that's the fake one. Well, I'm r- probably wrong. I wrong. don't. Oh, ah. he thought the vegan one was the real one. Mackenzie mm. will be very interested with this outcome. Ah, <laughs> and and that's because I think the they had more on the coating and everything on the plant based one. Right to make it. Even better. Yes. The other premium ice creams that I've had in ice cream bars, it's been a long time. Yeah. The much creamier than this Magnum. All right. So, so now we, we're on the uh, the taste trials. I didn't bring anything for you to taste. Oh, well, that's okay. Okay. But, so uh, where we go from here? So, well, remember to smile. I'm smiling now. I, I just had ice cream for breakfast. Yes. Well, that's a good thing yeah. to smile about. And you know what smile is? It's our code word, our secret word. For the month. Of May. Right. Or my birthday month, as we like to call it. It's May? I thought it was April. <laughs> it's May It's May now, right? It is May now. Yeah, okay. It is May. It is the most important month of the year. Just ask me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and also, while you're listening, make sure you pay attention because there will be a short window promotional item that will be popped in here somewhere. Um, we don't even know where. So um, after we all finish this, Brendan will work some magic and throw a special in there for all us. Right. Okay. So fusion and innovation. And uh, sounds like something invented by Doc Brown and Back to the Future and the good old DeLorean. Do you remember that uh, Saturday Night Live episode where Eddie Murphy was the cleaning guy and Mr. DeLorean kept trying to pay him in DeLoreans? It's like, look, <laughs> no. Mr. DeLorean, I already have three. I don't need no- Just give me my $20. Mm. Um, so the fusion is why we had the taste test. So there's some th- or, um, innovation. So there's things happening. So for ethical reasons, for um, environmental reasons, plant-based is a thing that's But it's also now. new, okay, yeah. because people like to try new things. Well, you know, and people want – Maybe they're watching their health or ethically or whatever, but they want to have the taste of what they used to have. They don't want to just leave everything behind and just yeah. have, you Well, know. It, that's the thing that puzzles me. Yes. Okay, because people who want to give up eating meat mm-hmm. still want to have tofu that tastes like meat. Like, yeah. you know, but people that give up being a vegetarian doesn't want to have a piece of steak that tastes like tofu. <laughs> So how do you figure that out? <laughs> well, I've got my own theories yeah. because I think we're all essentially, you know, carnivores because we've got the teeth for it and all mm-hmm. that. But health reasons, the way we've evolved, it might not be good for us, oh. as, as good for us. So it's not that we don't like it anymore. It grosses us out or yeah. we're mad at it. We're just looking after ourselves. Well, everything in moderation, but then that could substitute for the days that you want to 
be more moderate than the other days. Yes, that's on, right. On the, your intake of animal products. Well, and that's it. And like ethically, it's a big movement as well. You know, people are looking at you know the cow, the movie of the cows that have never run on grass before, and you think, how can uh, I eat that? And when you try to find, when you are eating meat, you want to find an ethical. You know, you want the animal to have one bad day. Yeah. You know, we talk about that exactly. often. Make sure that they are cared for properly. And they taste better. That's that right. Well, there's yeah. no factory farming, better right. food. They've had a, you know, a really good life. Yeah. And, you know, that's what you want to support. You want to support those producers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in other words, don't go shopping at the major supermarkets. No. Find a really good, good butcher, butcher somewhere and then, you know, really resource or research where you're sourcing your food from. Mm-hmm. And also with fusion, there's some really weird different combinations that are happening so not that we're doing the oddball thing again but you know you just think about california sushi when that first came out that was a oh, well you know because yes. you had that mm-hmm. and yeah it is this the extreme sushi i mean because they took it to a next level of combining things that were local to california as right. the as the california roll that's it you that's know? absolutely which you right. could even get in japan now <laughs> You can too. I find it very funny. Yes. And there's a even um, there's a tiger, a dragon roll yeah. that looks amazing. But but all that stuff came out of uh, California and the U.S. It, what didn't come out of when you go to a sushi bar? You've been to Japan, yeah. You know, you're getting really good sushi. Yeah, but it doesn't look like what you got here. Yes, exactly. And so this is the it, it keeps moving on. So we will discuss a few of those later. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to be talking with innovation. So. During COVID, we've all had challenges. We've all had to, you know, luckily with USA Foods, we're able to pivot the business so we could help people with local deliveries and pickups. Mm -hmm. So a lot of... a lot of the food companies and restaurants have had to pivot. So we'll be talking a bit how COVID has happened uh, or has advanced their businesses in yeah. some cases. We'll be talking about there's some interesting uh, marketing that's happening and uh, le- and leading towards sustainable sustainable products. I, ne- I should have had the ice cream because I can't yeah. speak. You know, you had too much vodka. Left. I must have. And trends and partnerships. So these are some of the things we're going to be talking about today. Now, uh, we've got a fun fact number one. Yeah. Amazon plans to introduce with your uh, with your palm service at Whole Foods. So they bought Whole Foods. Yeah, I know that. So yeah. you're able to walk so in. So it's going to go downhill just like Trader Joe's. <laughs> That's, well, there's no one in it. There's no one to look after you. Yeah. You sit there and you, so I don't know whether it's a palm print right. or they want everyone to have a chip in themselves like in Sweden. Yeah. Well, they'll probably do that. <laughs> So that is one bit of innovation yeah. that's happening. Mm-hmm. So then you don't have to hire anyone to assist your customers. So that should make it great. Right. Yeah. So everybody just, who they get to scream at when they get to the counter? Yeah. Well, that might be Probably a, a little picture comes up. Yeah, yeah of Jeff. <laughs> yeah. We hated you anyway. I wonder if it's the, yeah, the naughty picture he sent around too. And then Gatorade, can you, it, this is a great one. I release a sweet, sensitive skin patch. So sweat sensitive. Oh, sweat. Yeah, sweat. I, I, I lost one of my contacts. You know that. <laughs> I'm only seeing out of one eye. Oh, uh, yeah. There is an NA there. A sweat sensitive patch that lets you know when you're hydrated and the electric electrolyte levels are down, so you know to drink more Gatorade. Yeah, and they and it even tells you which Gatorade to drink. <laughs> yes. Come on. I know. You have to get your app. Yeah. Everything has an app, and you do that, and I thought. That is quite the selling point. So yeah, you get in with trainers and gyms and all of yeah, that. Because you, if you get dehydrated when you're working out or playing a game or something like that, it, it, it affects you more so, I think, afterwards. Yeah. Because I've been there where I've been dehydrated and you get headaches and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you have that. to it, recover. Yeah. And even, and you got to drink a lot, you know. So, you know, I try to refresh myself before and after the game. Yeah. You know, it's like before the game, maybe a cup of tea. During the game, you know, I have water all the time. Yep. And after, hydrate with beer. <laughs> so it's just, Does that have electrolytes in it? Must. It, it has to. It has to have something It's just good hydration. It. That's right. At that point, you know. <laughs> it's a weak drink. It's yes. good for you. Now, we will be back after a short break. Okay. Love my barbecue. Fat baby back blue. All right. So, look, we all just gone through all this covert stuff, and fortunately, we're on an island away from everybody else. Yes. And we're pretty easy compared to the rest of the world. But 
during that time, a lot of things I have changed with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with eating and take out and take away and whatever you want to call it. But it has changed the way we dine. Really nice restaurants then became um, sort a of- kitchen. Yes, yeah. and delivery. So you mm -hmm. finish it at home. So because it's fine dining, uh, you can't, they can't really have it you know, as good as it should be when you get it. So they say, just finish this off here, yeah. warm that up. And, and yeah. I know like our niece and nephew had a beautiful anniversary yeah. or birthday dinner mm -hmm. with, you know, like seven courses from a fancy restaurant. Yeah. And that's called like a fast fine. Fast fine. They were doing yeah. that in Sandhurst. Oh, the, were they yeah, at, at the club? At the club. So they would come around, they would, you would book it in and it'll only be a certain days of the week and we'll have the one week menu. Yeah. And it'll only be one or two different entrees. And uh, they come around with a little golf cart and drop it at your door and you would finish it off and have all the instructions on. It. And I think they even were posting up a little uh, YouTube video. Perfect. About, okay, this is what you do when you get it. And also people are more comfortable with things being delivered to them because if you never had anything delivered to you before you'd had your groceries delivered yeah. ghost restaurants have happened now that started happening before covid with yeah. uber eats and all those companies where they're a kitchen and when you look them up they look like they're a full restaurant but they're actually just for delivery services yeah. and i think people you know had to sort of embrace these things so even as COVID pass, I think some of these things will still hang on and we'll appreciate yeah, that. Well, there's a lot of things that are going to hang on in yeah. the food industry. You know, the takeaway, they redeveloped it, like the big companies like McDonald's and Burger King and all that. So they reformatted their things, make it more efficient, faster. And look at even McDonald's. You, you, you got to look at when you have a crisis, mm -hmm. okay, what could you do to stay in business? Yes. I mean, that's, that's business continuity. Yep. And these guys put their thinking hats on. And remember during when nobody could get out to pass 5Ks? You probably have a McDonald's in that 5Ks. You could go there, go to the to the window, get milk, yes. get eggs, get, you know, bread or buns, whatever they were. I think they were just selling their Yeah, I, I bought eggs from them and milk several times because yes. I was just like, oh, because the stores had limited shopping hours and all of that. So you just I went through. And, yeah, and if you didn't want to go into the store or yeah, you know, remove risk. So, so yeah. that's a sort of like a fusion, but it's just inventive too. Which yeah, is great. And also, we've got meal kits. So, in the first quarter of twenty twenty, so COVID Central, Hello Fresh, for example, because there's several of them, you know, got one million new customers. Yeah, and we did that. So at the beginning, I was ordering uh, through just my groceries being delivered or click and collect, yeah. and then I thought, okay, actually, I can stick to a budget. And have I have a HelloFresh and I have a local delivery service um, called Dinner Sorted, and I rotate every week. And then the last one we got here is the distilleries. They did such a good job. Yeah, and they still kept on making the booze. Booze because booze sales went up too. Yes. Booze was very important so for. Uh, but then they started making the the hand sanitizers and all that. But the only thing I miss, like you know, imagine if they were making hand sanitizer and it's still you know like you have different fragrances on it. Yes, like the IPA. <laughs> You know, the the, the botanical bo flavor, you know, so you can put it on. Uh, where were you? you back at the bar again? No, no, it's just a sanitizer. You know, so you get that nice aroma of a, you know, a musky bar. You know, like yes. oh yes, like so. I feel like I'm around a bunch of people yes. that were talking about nothing. Uh, oh, mm, yeah. Norm's down the corner. Yeah. <laughs> so they missed the boat on that one. Yeah, they did they a little bit. Put that little bit of fragrance in it. You know. Well, there was a company um, in the US because I met a lovely lady years ago. Her name's Deb Lily and she has a big florist business. And she actually went to this dis distillery that then they are run by Viet by veterans, mostly Vietnam veterans. Right. And they just ramped up the production to hand sanitizer and then sold it off to a whole bunch of businesses then and on sold it and raised money for right. um, veterans affairs. So I think, you know, there's a great opportunity and we kind of, we're not pushed enough to take chances sometimes. And yeah. this really. Yeah. Pushed a lot of things. To yeah. Take absolutely. Chances and be absolutely. Inventive. So now we get into partnerships. So, well, Reese's, well, I have two daughters, as you know, um, there's a lot of makeup in our house. There's like makeup stains on the carpet. Sometimes there's makeup on benches. There's makeup stolen from their mother. <laughs> I've actually stolen makeup from my mother when I've gone, but I said, yeah. Mackenzie. So now you steal from your kids. I was like, where's my eyeliner brush that I stole from grandma when I went home yeah. last time? <laughs> anyway, so Reese's 
is um, partnered with a company called Hot Dot Cosmetics, and they're making a peanut butter cup inspired line. So it's going to smell like Reese's Cups. Mm -hmm. It's taking inspiration from the colors of Reese's Cups. And it's got their branding in a whole new audience. Yeah. Well, it's similar to, you know, we bring in the lip balms. Yes, we do. Okay. The cereal that lip are balms. cereal lip balms. So there's uh, like Captain Crunch, Lucky Charms, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh, Honey Nut Cheerio Honey one. Nut Cheerio. Yeah. And then we got the other one that also brings in, well, it's all made by the same company. So then they do the Tootsie brands. Yes. So they do Tootsie Rolls and Tootsie Pops. And and then we have Pepsi and Mountain Dew yes. and all, all of those. The, all the soda ones. Yeah. So, okay. and that was even pre-COVID where they're taking yeah. one thing that you used to drink and now, well, you, you get the fra fragrance or you get the little, well, if you use a lip balm, you get, yeah. you get a bit of taste of it. I actually have a cherry Pepsi one sitting on my desk that I use. Now, I have to go back. It wasn't hot dot. It was hip dot. Hip dot. Which shows you how unhip I am. Yes. Mm -hmm. Brendan uh, just ruined my morning for me. Because he said, you know, when I got those magnums to fill to try, do you know what I almost got for you? Well, don't tell me what you almost <laughs> got for <laughs> me. There was. Well, there, tomorrow's. Yeah. yeah. Well, there your is. birthday's coming. Well, it's coming. There is a um, ice cream bar here called Golden Gay Time. And it has a traditional flavor, which is really yummy, but they've come out with, they have partnered with Cocoa Pops. So it's a Cocoa Pop covered one. Mm -hmm. So while he was digging, ratting through the freezer, looking for one of those, he found a Golden Gay Time birthday cake one. Yep. Right? And we've been doing birthday cake like Oreos, Oreos. forever. Birthday cake is the most popular flavor and which is like birthday funfetti. cake frosting now. Yep, yeah. all of that so he was looking for that and then yeah, when yeah. he couldn't find it he decided that since he couldn't have a cocoa pop one <laughs> i could have just the birthday get cake one. nicked and yeah. i couldn't have my birthday cake one right. which after you leave today we're driving back to the petrol station because <laughs> i'm petty like that and now that's what i want now here's another fusion yes salsa say it again george salsa not salsa <laughs> salsa <laughs> So we used to, so, you know, we started bringing, which, which is really popular, La Croix. Yeah. Oh my God. We can't keep people. Yeah. And the buble. <laughs> I have got exciting La Croix news. Oh. We actually supply a TV show and now maybe a second TV show. There's a TV show called The Wild. Yeah. It's in the US. It might be Nicola, I'm not, uh, Netflix, I think, but it's filmed in Australia and they order La Croix from us, La Croix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got, so anyone out there that knows really my favorite crappy reality t sh uh, shows mm -hmm. like Below Deck, uh, Below Deck contacted us uh, this week and said, you know, how quickly or what flavors can I get up to Airlie Beach? Wow. So the Americans can't leave the, the country without La their, their La Croix. Yeah, well, see, no, it's La Croix. No. And I got that from a Californian. No, well, on the website. Like the, like the Californian like told me, dude, like it's like La, La Croix. La, dude, on <laughs> like, the website, it says La Croix like joy. La Croix like joy? That's what it says on today? the website. <laughs> Shut yeah. up. All right. <laughs> yes, but you know what makes seltzer better? booze in it <laughs> yes and that's what they did so there's the fusion that's what we were getting at yeah we've got the white claw yeah. um and that it's great because it's like four calories or something it's nothing the only calories is from the alcohol that's does, exactly that, that's right always puzzles me how does alcohol have calories well because because if you light it it burns up into nothing <laughs> They ferment, they ferment it, so it's got sugars in it. Uh, so that's what happens. But so, and White Claw had to come out with a larger, uh, larger one called uh, what was it, Surge. So yeah. that gets it up to eight percent alcohol. All right. Yes. Now we're talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's been quite the big deal up at uh, the local bottle shop because I went in looking for White Claw just to um, do a fusion thing I saw on TikTok. And yep. I was like, I wonder if we have that yet or something. There's like 20 different brands of hard seltzer. Yeah. And yeah, because like once somebody does it and it's popular, yeah. everybody copies. And we know how that goes. We do. And we're grateful for that sometimes, sometimes too. Yeah. Yeah. And the hard seltzer also has like hard iced tea yeah. is coming out as well. Yeah. And then you... Go the opposite way, yes. which is really popular now, mm -hmm. is zero alcohol beer and wine. Yes, it is. Like, that yeah, okay. Yeah, you know, if you want to go to a party and you want to drink because, you know, drink driving laws, you can't screw around. Yes. Yeah, that's an alternative. Now, I remember 
I remember <laughs> the sorry days. Okay, going back to you know, when I was 18 and driving, going mm-hmm. out to the drive-in in, in uh, Long Island, right? Yes. I think it was Sunnyside Drive-In that we used to go to. And they served at the, at the little concession thing there near beer. Oh, I remember that. So, you, you know, and loser course, beer being a guy, right? Oh, yeah, have some beer. You know, I think, you know, trying to tell her that even though it's there's no alcohol. Oh, you, you make you feel good. You know, like, no, no. You know. no beer. And it was awful. It was a no beer. Yeah, it was disgusting in taste. Even like 3-2 beer that used to get in Kansas, like 3-2 <laughs> beer is like, oh, how could you drink this? So, but they, there's a lot of raves about the Heineken Zero and- yep. Well, well, I haven't it, tried it yet, but I, I, I'm going to try it because it's good to have a few alcohol-free days per year. I mean, oh. per week. <laughs> <laughs> for it, and then not a true Freudian slip, huh? Yeah. Um, but actually, you know what else they're doing? They're taking the alcohol out. Like Blue Moon and Heineken has a brand as well, um, which I can't say that I have to practice that. But they have uh, THC in them. Oh, yeah. So, but you can't get that here yet. No, I don't think we'll get it here. But, you know, if you could take one buzz for another. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Do they test for, do they roadside test? I know they do for alcohol, yeah, home, well, but they do. They do that. Do, they do a swab on your mouth or something. Yeah, they do that here. Yeah, I haven't done that. Yet. No, I haven't. <laughs> Probably because that lady doesn't look like she'd do that. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> there's also with health drinks. So there are companies that are making kombucha. Because mm-hmm. people have decided to, you know, branch out and try to be healthier and taste some, you know, maybe some challenging things they haven't tried before to get away from soda. But there is a company, I think it's in Pennsylvania, called Brew Doctor, and it's zero waste, and it's sort of a circular business model. So they sell tea, right. like kombucha. Mm-hmm. And so they make the kombucha out of the tea they sell, and they get the alcohol that they sell out of the kombucha. Okay, so, so it's the a fermentation full process. circle. So the three products mm. um, from that business model, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. So the Heineken and Northern California. So the, their brew. Oh, so Laguana, Laguanas, yeah. Laguanas is their brew. I had their beer when I was over there. Well, there you go. Nice. Good old NorCal. Mm. Glad we're doing something with that yeah. crop up north. And, and then also going with the TAC thing and all that. Here it's about fusion. You know, yes. Gummy bears. <laughs> There's a whole thing on edibles. And, and I always thing. want to know, how did uh, Little Debbie come up with the name Cosmic Brownies? <laughs> <laughs> There's and, something going on. Yeah, I know there was something going on when they were making it. And I said, well, we got, you can't put that product in here. Oh, maybe now they can. Yeah, they could call it that. That's true. Mm. And now we've got current and future trends. So these are things that are hot and happening. In so- the future, you will have. <laughs> So plant-based. So people are trying to be, there's a new trendy word, Phil. Yeah, I see that. Flexitarian. Flexitarian. Which means some days you're vegetarian, some days you're carnivore, some days you're an omnivore, some days you're vegan. I think I've been like that most of my life. That's what most people I think are. I mean, there are a few people that are only meat and potatoes and that's it. Those Um, Irish people. (laughs) Well, speaking of the UK, now more than 25 uh, percent of the UK population call themselves flexitarian. And they call themselves pansexual, uh, too. Pans- We're not getting into this. This is well, not. This also a- has to do with. Yeah. No, it has nothing to do with it at all. So stop. <laughs> it's a fusion. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Does, uh, there's yeah. also. I'm not Keep letting. The cards this- and letters coming in for us. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Direct them to Phil <laughs> at USAP. So we've got um, meat blends. Now, I've got these two because. Ainsley doesn't listen to this, so this is safe. They look like a hamburger or a sausage, yep. and they are, but mm-hmm. they're filled with a percentage of vegetable. So it's doing the cheating that I've done for years anywhere, where I sneak, I sneak the, even Brendan, who hates mushroom, often eats mushrooms. I know. I know. You do so, not. Okay, so it's it's like using as a filler, but still having meat, but less meat, and using yeah. something else as a filler. I mean, we've been doing that for, for you Ever. know, it's, yeah, my father was doing that, making hamburgers, you know, <laughs> we, and I, you know. I, know. I do that. And when the kids were little, my pasta sauce used to mm. almost be like a stew because it had all the veggies, in all it. the veggies in it, and then you know I'd yeah. whiz them well, up. I was looked like a farm. Yeah, <laughs> but occasionally, whatever meat we had went in there. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, yes. So people are trying to, you know, that's another thing with health. And there is a new milk you can get this protein. So it's a vegan milk or non-dairy milk called pea milk. So it's peas have a really good stuff. P-E-A has a really good I was going to say, level. anybody can make pea soup. I guess anybody can make pea milk. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, pea milk, it can make it like a pea kibacha. <laughs> You were shocking. Oh, uh, come on. What would you do without me? I don't know. <laughs> uh, so we've actually had that in the fridge for coffees and things. So yeah. it's just, it's it looks right. Mm. I find it splits in coffee, but I have cooked with it and it's really good. So yeah. if you're trying to get a little extra protein, you need to get off dairy. That's yeah. helpful. Well, I, you know, it's talking about with the sausage and mixing yeah. more with uh, veggies and other things besides the animal stuff is I was watching Rick Stein yeah. last week and his thing with France because, you know, he's all over the place. Yeah. So he went to one place that's famous for this sausage. And you know what's in the sausage? Nothing but awful. Oh, yeah. Awful. 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 Yeah, so like, you know, all the chitlings and all this other stuff, and tripe, everything. Love. And it's stuffed into the sausage with champagne. Oh, well, see, it's champagne and, fixes everything. And then they, they pan fry it in butter. <gasps> and it's like the only place that makes it, it's... It probably goes way back to, I don't know. Well, see, my favorite, when I go home to visit my mother, the thing I ask for is liver and onions. Mm -hmm. So I would be right up the alley. I can't do kidneys, but if there's no kidneys in it, I could yeah, probably No, it doesn't have it. any kidneys. It's all like white uh, awful in it. <laughs> <Okay>. Just, <laughs> now. Because you put champagne. You can't speaking, put champagne with dark meat. <laughs> no, no. Speaking of things that you yeah, shove into things that you don't want to know what it is, four and 20 pies. Uh. <laughs> They have, I heard a truck driver, right? An old oh, yes, crusty truck driver on the radio the other day. Yeah. And he eats the plant-based four and 20 pies. And he said he couldn't tell the difference. Well, that's pretty good because it probably the amount of fat is it's the still same. the same. So yeah. they're using vegetable shit like Crisco or something. Yeah, yeah. Because somebody, well, somebody, but what I heard, yes. okay, was that there is a golf size ball of fat in a pie. I believe that. Saturated fat. How yeah. good is that for you? Mm -hmm. Now that's why you have it once a year at the football. Yes. Then you try to burn the top layer of your mouth off. Yeah. Um, and we've also got some trends with um, seasonings and spices. So yeah. it's sort of like sriracha's being scooched aside a little bit yeah. and bring in harissa, which is more a Middle Eastern sort of spicy okay. taste as well. Which, um, so I'm going to keep an eye out on some of the things we still, because we still see a lot of sriracha and we see a lot of uh, tapatio put with different things yes. as well. Mm. Like the pickles. Did yeah. you see those? The tapatio pickles. Yeah. How awesome is that? Um, and um, ube, which is ube, which is the um, sweet potato. So oh, okay. oh, the, the purple. The purple one. That's beautiful. That yeah. one. But it tastes, doesn't taste like sweet potato. No, it tastes like candy. Well, to me, it tastes like um, chestnuts. Oh, yeah, it does too. It has that meaty sort of taste. Mm. So that is evidently the next big thing, and it's called the matcha of the Philippines. The matcha. I was lucky enough to grow up eating a lot of Filipino food, and yeah. I adore it. So hopefully that but, does happen. You know happen. that purple one that comes out of Japan? Yes. There's one area. That's one of those seven oh, blue the, zones. Oh, the blue zones where people yeah. live and longer. And they eat a lot of that. Right. Those are yep. so yep. good. Um, we spent a small fortune on those a couple of years ago. The Dandenong Market went down there. And yeah, the Dandenong yeah. Market, so you could always find it there. Yes, yep. absolutely. And we've got some fusion, which, um, you know, you've got a few fusion things happening here we can talk oh, about. Yeah, well, these are like fusions that mostly like uh, restaurants and stuff like that. So my first encounter with mm -hmm. a fusion restaurant was way back in the 1980s, okay, working in Lower Manhattan, mm -hmm. Cuban and Vietnamese fusion restaurant. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they, they were both people coming over by the boat, basically. Yes, absolutely. At that time. And uh, somehow or another, they got together and we're having plantanos with uh, pho. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah. The spices would be great. Yeah, but then you, then you move on and to more current things like Korean and Mexican. Mm -hmm. So you got Korean tacos. Uh, yeah, Korean tacos made with bulgogi. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what else we got there? Well, a, a, an Italian Southwestern type fusion, which will be chili roni. Oh, yes. All right. Yes. A uh, chili mac and cheese, as we call it our house. A pizza dog. Oh, a yes. Not a pizza dog. Sorry. A pretzel dog. A pretzel dog. So, so you get a, a dog, a hot dog, and you yeah. wrap it with pretzel dough and you bake it. Oh, yum. 
I mean, that's been done with the crescent rolls and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's like, yeah, yeah, it's a pig in a blanket of a different. Yeah. And then there's uh, root beer float cookies. <gasps> oh, I'll that's dive in on that one. That's going to be pretty good. And then I, I was looking around. There's donuts. That yeah. Actually, they, they don't look like donuts. They look like Twinkies, mm-hmm. right? And they make them, they call them uh, sushi donuts. Right. So the topping, the icing and stuff imitates like a sushi roll. You know, like a roll or, yeah. you know, like when you pick up the little thing of sushi. And it's yeah, it's a the nori. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like that. But it looks more like a, you know, it's a shape of a Twinkie. So I guess you could get Twinkies. And if you're good with icing and decorating, mm. are you listening? Uh, Penny. Penny Bun, yeah. Okay. Is to make them look like a, a sushi hand roll or things like that. Oh, that would be perfect. People go crazy with that. Well, do you remember the fusion, the, the, uh, re- the most recent donut fusion I can think of, are the cronuts. Yeah, cronuts, yeah. Yeah, cronuts where they make and, croissant donuts. Yeah. And then people were lining around the block for hours. Yeah. And then um, going back to uh, my old roots with White Castle. Yes. Well, they had a surf and turf. Oh, did they? Yes. So what did they <laughs> stick in that? Uh, well, it was a half a slider. You know, right. The original hamburger and then a piece of like, you know, like a filet of fish, you know, that, you know, like all the like McDonald's had the fish filet. Yes. So they had their own version in it. So they put both of them together. Surf and turf. I, uh, don't, I don't know how I feel about that one. Yeah. And then uh, when we were up in Montreal, mm-hmm. okay, there's a franchise up there and they were making these outrageous sushi tacos. Oh, I remember you talking about oh, that. And tell me again what was in just, them. Well, so it was. Like the, you know, regular taco shell. Yep. Then they had like the sushi fillings into it. And then on top was uh, like uh, the the tuna. Yeah. It was raw. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't cooked or anything. And then like with a little sauce on it. And it just was, the combination was just fabulous. Oh, yeah. See, now when Phil and Jeanette go away, the first thing I say when Phil comes back into the office is like, what'd you eat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what didn't we What'd eat? you find? Yeah. <laughs> And well, so we got one last one here. A Thanksgiving burrito. <laughs> okay, let me guess. Uh, you, yeah. It's, Turkey? Sweet potato? Yeah, it's just all your leftovers. Uh, you yeah. roll it up into a, like a, a burrito that you get on the, uh, what do you call those? The big fat burritos. Yeah, like California, but like the, yeah. San, yeah. Mission burritos. Mission burritos. Well, yes. that's like the Thanksgiving sandwich I make Brendan, which is about. Yeah, the Bacagalu sandwich, yeah. <laughs> You have to squish it down, but the, you know maybe a burrito is an easier way for you and to eat it. And then think about it: if you make that burrito into a chimichanga, oh, 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 oh. instead of putting salsa on it, you put gravy and cranberry sauce. Oh, oh actually, I can feel the palpitations already. Oh, like my arteries being blocked. God, that, that's going to be so good. Okay, let's try that because we have you what, have a what's Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. It's a next yeah. week. Well, we can just get one of those little turkey roasts. Yeah. We can just make a baby one. Yeah. And you have a deep fryer? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll have what's on. That is so bad how this all happens all in here. It's just like Heston. Imagine Heston. We should talk to Heston Blumenthal. Yeah, he wouldn't want to talk to us. Oh, I love Heston. He would. He would. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I wouldn't be able to talk to him because I'd just be laughing at stupid glasses that he wears. <laughs> You'll, I'll just be standing, staring at him. I have a slight crush on Heston. Now, Japanese foods, we are going to be seeing a bit of that because the Olympics are finally going to happen. Yep. And so the biggest thing is sort of the souffle pancakes. You can find them here in Melbourne now. There's places that right. do them. So I, you know, there's going to be a, a new sort of resurgence of some Japanese things. And Filipino barbecue is, is another thing that's supposed to be coming around. It'll probably go through the States first. And I think it's already get in, the, it. yeah. in the food trucks. So we need to look into that. So that'd be very vinegary base. It, yeah, it can be. It's so beautiful. Pork, yeah. Filipino cooked pork is they, just they amazing. It in, yeah, I know. It's like adobo does that. Yeah. And um, so it's yeah. my friend Carrie, she gave me a really great recipe years ago, which I need to just double check that. As long as we don't get into the balut. No, we're not talking about balut. We'll okay. just leave that alone. Let's not. Do it. And um, there's... Um, Nutrigenomics? Ge- yes, so it's a person's genetics oh, and recommending okay. an eating plan, which ties into um, 23andMe. So like Ancestry.com yeah. and all of those, mm-hmm. they're trying to come up with a system so they can offer, because they have your DNA and what you might die of, Yeah, uh, the best sort of diet for you. Yeah, I guess if you start off, could start off that way, but it's pretty hard to change your diet after you're used well, to eating Yeah, you know, it should be limited. Burritos, That's exactly. 
exactly right. Yeah. And, you know, that might even go into, they're talking about that going into like a pre-prepped meal plan. So if you are, you know, green, blue, oh, yeah. red, mm-hmm. and then you can get those. Yeah. But then again, it comes out that every time you read it, the Mediterranean diet is like always the best one to eat. It is. But yeah. there's something about living there because those oh, countries, right. the people still smoke like trains. Yeah. And yeah. It, like, And so that goes against other studies yeah and then the other thing is they eat very late but they nap during the daytime yeah they try doing that i'll be a and when they take their (laughs) (laughs) and when they take their vacations they take their vacations yeah like you know they actually take a month off and just you know don't check emails and do that sort of thing so it's a lifestyle not to do that but yeah jeanette is yeah like (laughs) Why can't you leave it alone? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, I I really do think we need to have Jeanette as a guest as a right of reply. (laughs) I really do think, Jeanette, you need to come in and we're going to make a list. We'll go back and forth and it's your turn. (laughs) I'm not going to tell you what we fought about yesterday. Freaking fan. All right. Uh, he just did. See, Jeanette, he just did. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we'll be right back with Nat Nush. <laughs> Hiding from Jeanette. Yes. So <laughs> what happened? We got the. You know, I know which button it is. My finger is only hitting that button. I turned it off and it goes back on again. Yes. We'll go to the break with that and we'll come back and you'll just. <laughs> I'm not a moron. I know it. <laughs> Ready? And in three, two. Okay, we're back with Nat Nosh. Yeah, okay. I do love it. So we're going to do this real quick because some of these things are boring. Okay, so first one National Devil's Food Cake. We talked about that. We have talked about that Out. and it's good. Yep. Okay. Gone. Tuesday, Thursday, May 20th. National Quiche Lorraine Day. I think we did that also. But here's a dilemma. Yes. So if you put a pie crust down and then put your egg and your cheese and all that, yeah. no matter how you make it, whether yeah. it's a quiche, right? Mm-hmm. But if you don't put it, use a pie crust, then it's a frittata. Frittata, yes. Yeah. It is. Or you can use, if you do, um, if you put sliced potatoes down, Ooh. it makes it like the Spanish tortilla. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so it's... It's, and remember, real men don't eat quiche. Remember that? Yeah. Where, that, where did that come from? I don't know. It's the 70s, but Phil no. Donahue did. So, but, okay. you know. And it also on the same day, National Pick Strawberry Days. Well, that's not our season now. No, we're so, that, unless you go to Queensland. Yeah. So, so those no. up in Queensland, pick some strawberries for This us, is, please. yeah, National Pay $7 for a punnet of strawberry. Yeah. Here. And yes. then it's uh, on Friday the 21st, go back to strawberries, strawberries and cream day. They're pushing the strawberries. Yes. You, this must be a California thing. Yep. Yum. On the 22nd is National Vanilla Pudding Day. I think we did that too. We've done pudding. We've done puddings. But vanilla pudding, don't forget if you slice bananas and put vanilla wafers in it, yeah. you've got like the banana pudding that Elvis loved. Mm-hmm. And you can also put pudding, vanilla pudding, yep. in cake mix. Yeah, and it yeah makes make it, it moister. Nice. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And then, you know, I just saw a nice combination talk about fusion. Yeah. All right. Vanilla pudding topped off with uh, cinnamon. Oh, that's or nice. Or sugar. That would be a nice combination. That would be lovely. Because I like that in my my coffee. You know, like if you go to a, you know, a Starbucks or whatever, yeah. like in, in America, where they have all the, the American flavors, I always have them do half uh, French vanilla and half cinnamon. Oh, nice. Are we, yeah. Our local Starbucks, I need, they need to bring cinnamon back for- uh, Oh, we got the, cinnamon, uh, the Tarani in the yes, store. Yes. I'll just have that in my office with the pump ready yep. to go. Mm-hmm. So we'll- Move on from there, and May 23rd is National Taffy Day. Yeah. And guess what? We're going to do an old-fashioned candy episode oh, coming up, so okay. we can talk about saltwater taffy. And- yeah. So don't talk no more about it. No, shush. <laughs> shush, although I'm going to use... No, 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 no. No, <laughs> Phil, I have been asking as an employee and as a customer yeah. for three years, can cool. we get the peanut butter taffy back in, please? Okay, Thank All right. you. See? Right. Oh, and then National Escargot Day. Yay! Oh, yeah, I, like I that. love them. Did I ever say the story about what happened with the escargots in the country? No. Oh, so I... Italians eat escargots. Yeah, right. They eat anything that moves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can hit with a hammer and eat. So yep. they went out. My my aunts and stuff, and 
this is in the summertime. So they bring back like a whole pot of escargot. Mm -hmm. So they brought it on a Saturday. They put it into the kitchen. Yep. And of course, the one thing you want to do is keep them for 24 hours, make sure they're all, you got it just like clams and a lot of other seafood. They got to be alive. You know, yes. They can't be dead. Right. So what happened was they all escaped. <laughs> In the whole kitchen, that's full of snails all over. Well, at least you knew if they were stuck to the wall yeah. and alive. <laughs> that would be very frightening if you had an issue with that. That is <laughs> now my favorite part of escargot is just sopping up all the garlic oh, yeah. butter the with garlic some butter. bread. Oh, yum! I love the French. Yes. I do. I did have that uh, pretentious French moment when I was. Yes. And they give it a little escargot tray. Yes, and I had that. I had that and a glass of champagne. Oh. And I was like, this is the best. <sighs> well, then you got the complete opposite the next day. <laughs> Brown paper bag day. <laughs> That's how Paula Bean, Dean got started. With um, She was called, um, oh, I forgot, the lady, right? Yeah. And she used to make bagged lunches up and sell them oh. in Georgia. Yeah, right, and know. then that's how she started it. But brand and they'd bag be very them. fat, man. I'm sure it was good. Honey. That's why she got return customers. Yeah, and also on the same National Wine Day. <laughs> oh no! Oh, the other. There's wine. no H in it. It's yeah, just no, a I, again. I told you, I lost the contact. Yes, yeah. it is wine, yeah. and I will wine if I don't. I had a time that in Jersey, right? This cop pulled over Jeanette, right? Yes, and she. uh so we said, you know, so she he says, you know, license registration. She gives him a license. He goes, uh, lady says here you need uh, corrective lenses, and she says, well, I got contacts. You know, she okay, goes, lady says here you need collective, you know, corrective lenses. She says, no, no, I got contacts. He says, lady, I don't care who you know. It says. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh okay. God! I uh, thought we'd make it through one show, but no, no. no. that's a dad joke, right? Okay. Now, uh, if you guys, if you guys want to complain about Phil's jokes, yes, just go to <laughs> podcast at usafoods.com.au. Yes, and, you and can leave. put attention, Barbara. That's exactly <laughs> right. Now, now, and I will agree with you, and then I'll berate him for you. But we do have some feedback this week. Uh, from, we've got Liz J, who is one of our original listeners. Now, she's got quite a few topics here, so I'm going to just pick a few out, and then maybe I'll pick a few out next week as well. Yeah. Um, but she was very happy. She's missed um, Podcast 31, so we have to double-check YouTube that that's up there because mm -hmm. she's watching it there. And she was talking, this is in response to the oddball combinations. Um, it's the Belgians who have fries with a choice of at least four sauces. One is which, which is mayo. Um, Belgium is where she first had fries with mayo and loved it. Um, and she is quite surprised. She can't believe I work with food and can't stand having one food touch another. Now, if it's meant to touch each other, like pizza or nachos or yeah. any of that, I'm okay. But it's when my salad dressing migrates to my mashed potatoes, I've got an issue. But mm -hmm. I am a weirdo, Liz. I admit that freely. Cottage cheese and ketchup, not a big fan of, but cottage cheese and fruit. I'm not a big fan of cottage cheese. If I want <laughs> cottage cheese, I go for regatta. Okay? It's the same thing. You're getting the same calories and all the other stuff, and it tastes better. Yeah, well, it's yummy. I yeah. do like regatta. And the poor people that used to live out in the Midwest, yeah. you know, before everything really got shipped all over the place, they couldn't get regatta. So, like, if my sister needs to make uh, lasagna. They used to use uh, cottage cheese. Oh yeah, oh, I've had it with cottage disgusting. cheese. Oh, when you know now, if you watch Fancy Master Chef, you learn how to make it yourself. Cottage cheese. No ricotta. Oh, oh ricotta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I can't say it like you do. So ricotta. I yeah, yes, I know. I can't. I'm hand over to you now. Liz's weird food, food combination is putting bacon on top of buttered and jam toast, yeah, which I love, yeah. and having it with eggs over easy. The salty sweet taste mix is great. Um, and she was just saying peanuts and Coca-Cola is definitely a Southern thing, but uh, she's never tried it and doesn't think she will. <laughs> <laughs> which I completely understand. And um, I'm going to save another one. I'm going to save another couple of these, Liz. Um, we'll talk about that shop. And we'll also talk about a pie floater that you mentioned, but we'll save that for another week. Yep. Okay. So now, like, if you're looking for us, we're at uh, 73 Cochran's Road in Moorabbin. That is correct. And you can come in and see us Monday through Thursday, 10 to 5. 
Friday, 10 to 6. You got a little extra time. Yep. Saturday, 10 to 5. And Sunday, 11 to 5. And most time, if you do drop in there, you can always come and say, hey, is Phil or Barbara yeah, here? Yeah, because we're around. Yeah, we'd love to say hello. And like, do that. Well, maybe not. But well, d- <laughs> depending. <laughs> <laughs> if we're there or not, I'll yeah. make sure all my makeup's on. Okay. Um, now, uh, the producer... Oh, the news alert. Yes. Episode 30, Waffle and Pancakes is missing from YouTube. So it's on Spotify, Stitcher, ex- Apple, etc. So we'll just update those. But if yeah. you want to catch up on them all, you can look at the uh, different, um, different places we have them. Now, also, I have one more bit of feedback, which I will bring up. Uh, Leslie, so Leslie said, well, this is about our ice cream, mm-hmm. ice cream and milkshakes. Yeah. She said, yes, it was, gr- you know, she liked the show. It was great. It brought back memories of Steve Ambrose, my Aunt Marsha's boyfriend, oh. right? He worked at making ice cream for Peterson's Creamery and remembered how my favorite Rocky Road never had enough marshmallows in it. And he made a whole batch with triple the amount and got fired. <laughs> um, he was a joker, but that joke backfired. I loved it, but Mr. Peterson did not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the good old yeah. days. See, I never got fired at the bagel bakery when I made my, you know, free everybody, my little everything bagels for myself. <laughs> well, that was the, you just didn't ruin a whole batch of uh, bagels, though. No, no. no just, that's right. I think Steve Ambrose was trying to impress and, the girl. And the boss always said to us, like, the first day, which he knew better, is, you know, if you want any bagels, yeah, just take home, you know, you pack up a bag of bagels for yourself, bring home. Nice. After the first day, you don't want to look at bagels anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's, like any bakery, you know, like, if yeah. you just do it all day, you know, no, it's but work. Unfortunately, with my bank account, that has never worked working at USA yeah. Foods. So I was just like. Well, because it's just such a variety and you're not making it. You're not. No, I know. And, and doing the same thing all day. I did ban myself this week. I said, if you see me walking out here and I have candy in my hand, I'm not allowed to purchase it. Okay. That's it. All right. I took the ban off the next day, but that day. Yeah. <laughs> but the cookies were okay. Yeah. Yes. Luckily, we have support. Yeah. Isn't cookies like candy? Isn't that like a baked candy? Well, that's a. It yes. Is. It is. It's sort of it's, like a little sweet. It probably has sweet just treat. as much sugar as a Milky Way bar or something. Yeah. Yes. Well, now, I think. Now, also, I'm going to say one more thing. Yep. Subscribe. So subscribe to us on the YouTube channel or Spotify or Apple or whatever. Feel free to give us a, um, you know, five stars there if you feel feel so inclined. And podcast at usafoods.com.au. We can yeah. have, a, have a little chat there as well. And next uh, week's show is going to be about the beloved hamburger. Because we, it is? It's National Hamburger Month. That oh. is perfect. There's yeah. all sorts of yummy hamburgers. Yeah. So May is Burger Month. So visit your favorite burger place. Ooh, mm. I have to fly for that one. I don't think they're letting us out till 2023. Okay, and we'll continue also with our uh, sign-off from America. So this is a, a Marx Brothers. Yes. So it, you want to be Groucho? I'll you be Groucho. Be... Okay. Uh, get out of here before I get arrested. Nah, I like to stay here and see that. <laughs> <laughs> have a good day, you guys. Yep. And eat a burger. <laughs> a fusion one. Yeah. Bye. Ooh.